Hello, I'm Oscar Morgan and welcome to Grad School Now. I'm standing in front of the College of Health Sciences and Human Services East and West Buildings, which houses some of the most popular graduate programs, the Masters in Communication Disorders and Physician Assistant. To hear more about them, Denise Cantu from the Office of Graduate Studies sat down with professors from this college to discuss these programs that are in such high demand. Welcome to another episode of Grad School Now. I'm your host, Denise Ganthu, and today we're talking about some of the careers that are in most demand, and we're going to start off by talking about the Masters in Communication Disorders, and for that, we have Ms. Sonia Salinas. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Okay. For some of the students that are not familiar with our health science programs, what is a Masters in Communication Disorders? It's basically a graduate degree in speech-language pathology, where we prepare individuals to become speech-language pathologists. It's a study of language disorders, articulation mm -hmm. disorders, hearing disorders, fluency disorders, and really any type of communicative need, um, including feeding and swallowing. Now, why is this career in such high demand right now? Well, I think there's a population growth for one, and the other is an earlier identification of needs, um, mm -hmm. so that we, we see a, a larger need for this type of uh, profession. This is a two years master's degree. When a student gets into this program, what can they expect from their graduate experience? Well, they can expect to have those graduate courses and a direct uh, clinical experience yeah. with clients right off the bat. So they get to actually be in lecture types of classes and then applied uh, experience through clinical practicum. First year, mostly a coursework. Yes. Second year, where are they normally placed and what kind of practice do they get to have with clients? They're, they're placed all over the valley and sometimes outside of the valley and outside of the state depending on a particular area that they yes. may want to be in. Um, so basically it can be anywhere that the university has an affiliation agreement with. Great. And once the students finish a two-year master's degree in communication disorders, what can they expect career-wise? They can expect to be able to work in a, a gamut of of types of employment uh, agencies such as um, university if you want to become a professor or you can actually go on and work in rehab hospitals, mm -hmm. veterans hospitals, private practice, rehabs, pretty much uh, anywhere that there is a need for individuals uh, with communicative disease. So the opportunities are endless. Tell yes. us a little bit about salary. Do you have some figures as far as how much they can start making when they graduate? I mean, again, depending wherever the employment is, but it can start anywhere from fifty-five to eighty thousand dollars. Well, that's definitely very promising. But tell us a little bit about job security, because that's definitely a concern I know for many of our students or viewers. They want to go into a career where they're going to have job security. Well, I, I think that this particular field is growing ever more so, and mm -hmm. it has been doing so consistently over the years. And again, going back to early identification and the population growth. A lot of our viewers, a lot of our students graduate from UTPA, so they definitely want to stay in the valley, close to family. What are the job opportunities like here in the valley for this de degree? Oh, they're, they're vast. Again, private rehabs, hospitals, uh, many opportunities for this particular type of profession. So definitely a program that's going to continue growing. It already is very, very competitive. We get a couple hundred applications. Select 20 to 25 students actually get admitted to the program. How can a student start preparing within their uh, undergraduate degree to improve their chances to get into the master's degree? They could have a, a strong GPA, strong GRE scores, good recommendation letters, a strong essay of, as to why they want to become a speech language pathologist, and maybe do some outside kinds of observations, volunteer work at uh, agencies or employment places where uh, they do employ speech language pathologists. Great. Well, there you have it. Start preparing early if this is what you want to do ultimately. If you want a master's in communication disorders, you have to start preparing yourself while you're still in an undergraduate degree. Thank you so much, Ms. Salinas, you're for welcome. being here with us. Stay with us in just a little bit. We're going to talk about another degree that's in very, very high demand, and that is your physician assistance program with Mr. Willard Baker. But before we check in with him, let's go ahead and talk to Oscar Margame, who has some of the upcoming events. Thank you, Denise. Make sure you don't miss out on these upcoming events. On April 26, scientist turned filmmaker Randy Olson will be screening Sizzle, a global warming comedy. On April 27th, another film by Randy Olson, Flock of Dodos, and the filmmaking contest titled Science in Real Time. And on April 28th, president of Universal Connections, Albesa Vela, will present All Students Can Achieve Success Now. Don't forget to go to our website for further information and more details. Back to you, Denise. 
Thank you for those updates, Oscar, and welcome back. Now we're here to talk about another very popular program in the College of Health Science and Human Service, and that's our program in Physician Assistance. And to talk about that, we have Mr. Willard Baker here with us. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Denise. I appreciate the opportunity. Now, for the students that are not too familiar with this program, what is the Physician Assistance Program? Well, essentially, uh, what we are are individuals who are being trained to do things uh, in the medical model like our physicians do. Our program is 28 months. It's very, very intense. And that, that's what we have you here for. Tell us, what exactly can students expect? I mean, how, how intense is it? I mean, are we talking about full-time daytime here, maybe a part-time job on the side, or kiss no. everything In goodbye? Fact, you know, we, uh, we absolutely discourage that they're doing any kind of work uh, whatsoever because they've got to be focused in on their studies. Uh, it is, as I said, with as much as they've got to consume. It's almost like trying to get a drink of water out of a fire hydrant. It just, it can be overwhelming. What can the students expect upon graduation? Their first year is pretty much their nose are in the books, mm -hmm. okay, and they're going to be in books all. Uh, second year they're going to go through clinical rotations where they'll get like two months in pediatrics, uh, two months in emergency room, two months in surgery, two months in obstetrics, gynecology, uh, a couple of months in elective courses. And while they're going through with their preceptors, their physicians, a lot of times the preceptors are looking at them too as possible uh, people who could come back and, and help them with that. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of our applicants uh, towards graduation, they, they've already had several offers. The good thing is that UTPA offers a phenomenal and excellent program in physician assistance studies as well as communication disorders which we talked about earlier and not only that but we also have some other programs that are just as highly competitive. Our college is just uh, I don't believe second to none uh, as far as dietetics certainly our biggest which is our smallest program it's kind of like a small family uh, nursing, which is our biggest program, mm -hmm. and they are a, a huge demand as far as our nurses are concerned. Uh, rehab, uh, occupational therapy, mm -hmm. clinical lab science, uh, all uh, communication disorders, all across the board, a huge demand. Anywhere in the healthcare field, they're, they're just absolutely screaming. In fact, this is even international. We've had some recruiters a couple years ago in San Antonio from South Australia they are in a world hurt. So it's just not just here in the Valley, United States, it's, we're talking international. So if students are looking for job security, for job demand, for a very promising future, College of Health Science definitely has a lot of programs from which they can choose from. Absolutely. Again, that was social work, occupational therapy, communication disorders, physician assistants, um, rehabilitation counseling, and am I missing anybody? Well, there's nine. And I always Dietetics, have clinical lab, <laughs> <laughs> just a lot. Of course, you can check them all out on our website at utpa.edu forward slash grad school. Now, Mr. Baker, uh, one last thing before we, we close off, uh, just tell our viewers, our students, especially undergrad students, what can they do to prepare to get into these programs? We want people who are focused in on their career, are dedicated to it, and can stand up to the rigors of the program. Well, thank you so much for being here with us and sharing all You're these welcome. exciting things happening at the college, and Absolutely. especially in the Physician Assistant Study. Absolutely. Studies. Thank you, Denise. Thank you so much, Mr. Baker. Once again, thank you for joining us. I'm Denise Cantu with Grad School Now. And now a featured student of the month, Brenda Mesa, talks to us about the Masters of Science and Nursing and explains how she's able to balance school with life and work. Let's hear what she had to say. Nursing, as far as I can remember, as long as I can remember, I've always wanted to take care of people, even as a young girl. I think whenever we'd play Barbies, I was the nurse. <laughs> it's something that's very rewarding, taking care of people, helping them on their way to improvement in their health and uh, their recovery. It's something that I'm very passionate about. When you're in the MSN program, what you're looking for is their chief complaint and then you start assessing the situation. You want to come up with what they call the differential diagnoses and try to narrow down what their problem is, diagnose and treat. I am currently enrolled in the MSN program, the Masters of Science in Nursing. I am in my second year. I am a part-time student in the program. I do volunteer for the American Cancer Society. I've been involved with the Relay for Life in the Cameron County Division 
I have been their treasurer for five years now. I work a full-time job. I work at a local facility and I work 40 hours a week, 32 to 40 hours a week. And then I have class once a week and I spend about four hours at the university one night out of the week. And then I have my son, so I, when I get home from work or from school, I have to focus on his homework, his extracurricular activities before I can start my studying and my homework. Um, it's different from your bachelor's or from undergraduate school in the sense that it's, your instructors are there to help you, but it's a lot of self-directed learning. When you graduate, you have your, your, ba your bachelor's degree. You're practicing as a registered nurse. When you get into the master's program, it's far more advanced in regards to your critical thinking skills and how you're taking care of your patients and how you're managing their health is really what it is. When I graduated from nursing school, I worked on a neurology medical surgical floor and always dealt with the adult population. That's an area of interest that I've always had. What I like about it is the friendships that you establish. Uh, these are going to be your future colleagues that you're going to be working with in the Valley. My instructors, I've known them since early 2000 when I started the undergraduate program. And um, again, they're very helpful. They're readily available to you. It is an attainable goal, it really is. Um, there is financial assistance um, through student loans, scholarships, look into scholarships. There are many um, programs that offer scholarships. I know that the master's program here does offer a scholarship every year. My goals after graduation are to stay in Cameron County to serve my community working again with the adult population, especially with the health care reform. Uh, patients or individuals will have more access, therefore doctors will be inundated with patients and an overload, and they're going to need assistance to help treat and take care of the population. That's all we have for you in this episode. We'd like to thank Brenda, Mr. Baker, and Professor Salinas for their time. To watch us again, log on to our website at utpa.edu forward slash grad school or follow us on YouTube and Facebook. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Oscar Morgan. This was Grad School Now.